What you are about to hear and to see is a presentation about touching dialogue given by David Kirk Campbell, that's me, at the European Association of Gestalt Therapy conference, which was held in Berlin in September 2010. This image is the logo of Touching Dialogue. It's also on the back of my business card. Recently, I gave this business card to a wise, elderly, Chinese woman acupuncturist. She studied the picture. There was a pause. And then she said, wow, this tells the whole story. I was flattered and curious. So I asked her to tell me what she saw in the picture. She said, some questions get no answer. We both laughed. At that moment, she was my teacher. Here now in the next hour, I want to answer your questions. I want to tell you as much as I can about touching dialogue so that you can see more, so you know what to look for in the two demonstration films, which are part of this presentation. Here in this picture, you can see the touching dialogue therapist's hands touching, for example, the back of a client. Touching dialogue is using the skin as an organ of communication to communicate unconditional acceptance to the body memory for the adult and to the body memory from the childhood. A result of this touch communication is that the body energy moves from caution to potential. If you look at the, the pictures, the images, which are inside the circles, the circles are represent, representing cells because the touching dialogue is communicating to the cellular memory within the body. You can see these images as moving from caution to potential, from left to right. Thinking of skin as an organ of communication, I believe, and Ashley Montague documents in his book called Touching the Human Significance of the Skin, he documents that touching is the first organ of communication for both the infant and the embryo. Touching dialogue is using touch to communicate messages through the skin to the entire body and the entire being of the, of the client. So the client has the invitation to move their cellular memory and their energy field from a place of caution to a place of potential. Now I would like to look more closely at the image which is the fourth from the left, the image inside the circle, and the image which is the fourth from the right. You'll see them right now. I invite you to look at these two pictures. Let these two pictures come to you. Compare them. What do you see? Imagine what it is like to live inside your, your own body as this picture represents a person's body. And imagine what it is like to, to live inside your body if the picture on the right was characterizing what it's like for you, to, for you inside your body. Touching dialogue is moving a person's internal body experience and body energy and body permission system from this place on the left over to this place on the right. 
Now I would like to give you an overview, to give you a map of where we, were, where we are going in the next 50 minutes. I'll talk about how I'm, I'm going to begin to say TD instead of touching dialogue. How TD is a body-centered psychotherapy. The goals of, of TD. How to do TD. There will be two demonstration films. The benefits of TD. and the, the training to become a TD therapist. Let's take it from the top and begin driving through this map. TD is a body-centered psychotherapy and it is a natural complement to Gestalt therapy. Like most other psychotherapies, TD, TD begins with talking to negotiate a contract as to how the client wants to change. How a client wants to change. I'm reminded of a poem from Rumi. In this poem, there's a word, door sill, which is the part of the door, the door frame just on the floor. It's what's underneath the door when the door is closed and you step across it as you go through the door, when the door is open. I'd like to, to recite this poem for you. It is, it is my, um, my favorite poem. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. That's the focus of the contract for touching dialogue. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. Touching dialogue is using, it's building a bridge of communication between the therapist and the client and between the client giving signals back to the therapist. It's a bridge of communication. This poem appears in the, at the opening of the book I've written about touching dialogue. And if you're interested in this book, you can contact me through my email address, through the homepage, and you can buy this book. TD, like some other psychotherapies, has the goal of changing the client's unconscious from the negative to the positive, from caution to to from caution to potential. TD is body-centered because it honors the skin as an organ of communication using a very gentle, caring touch to change the coding of the cellular memory from no to yes, from I can't to I will, from I should to I want. When the client's inner body experiences, experience changes from I can't to I will, there is a surge of energy available to the client. So the contract negotiated at the beginning gives this new energy a direction. TD clients have their clothes on during the session and usually a cotton blanket as well. Now we move to talk about the goals of touching dialogue. 
One of the goals of touching dialogue is to use a gentle, caring touch to move a client's body experience from caution to potential. A direct result is that the client receives a, a boost in their self-esteem. Their self-confidence goes up. Their experience of being okay becomes a body experience. In the 80s, when I developed Touching Dialogue, I noticed that some of my clients worked on the same issue again and again and did not get through the impasse. I developed TD to give clients more ego strength, an inner feeling of safety, so that they could go through impasse to make the real life change that they want. Now, following the map, we go forward to the how-to. The how-to of touching dialogue will, will soon be shown with two short demonstration films. Some of the main points to look for are the TD therapist often asks the client for permission to touch. This is to keep the authority within the client active. Sometimes little children are touched in ways that they don't like, but they don't have the experience, they don't have the ego strength to say no to the big person that's touching them. For example, this could be just tickling, which is overwhelming and too much for the child, but they like the attention, so they endure the touching. Here, it, with touching dialogue, you, you'll see in the film, permission is asked for again and again to keep the client active in evaluating whether they want the touch or they don't want the touch. In order to communicate to the entire body as a sense organism, the TD therapist places pillows under the client so that a very small movement to one part of, part of the client, client's body will transmit or affect the client's entire body. I'll take a drink of water. In these two pictures, you can see that the picture on the left has the pillows underneath this person, whose name is Trina, and the picture on the right, there's no pillows. The picture on the left shows the pillow positions for touching dialogue. Classic touching dialogue sessions begin with placing pillows in this way. If you look closely at the picture, you can see that comparing the two pictures, that with the, with the pillow under the left side of Trina, raising her chest, the left side of her chest, and actually raising also her left hip, there's more room for her neck to extend from her shoulders. Her head and neck are actually on a lower position than her spine. So there's an extension to her neck. There's more room, there's more space. If you look at, compare the two pictures looking at, at Trina's lower back, you can see that with the picture on the right, there's constriction, there's, there's compression. There's a, 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 a closeness just from the position. It's, uh, it's as if her torso and her hips are compressed together or jammed together. The way the, the pillows are underneath Trina's left leg, there's, there's an extension, there's more space. Uh, the, the, um, Trina's lower back is more relaxed. This thing about more space by positioning the pillows this way, the touching dialogue therapist is also giving a message that there's more space for you to be you, to be yourself inside your body. So there's both a physical purpose to having the pillows positioned this way, but there's also an emotional permission message that is given to the, 
the client while these pillows are positioned. Also, the, the, the pillow positions, the pillows being positioned in this way, allow for a very minimal touch movement on the back to transmit through the entire body. The touch is gentle and caring to communicate an emotional message of acceptance, safety, and contact on the level of being. The rhythm is slow to connect on the level of being. Here, watching this, this is a very short movie, preliminary to the longer movie. I just want you to notice that my movement is coming from my ankles and knees. The source of the movement is from my ankles and knees. There is a minimum of muscular effort from my back, shoulders, and arms. Actually, my arms, the muscles of my arms, are completely soft and relaxed. There's no effort, there's no flexion of those muscles. I studied Tai Chi for about five years when I lived in New York City, and the, uh, the idea and the background for this movement from the ankles comes partly from this Tai Chi experience. In the touching dialogue context, the purpose of the movement coming from the ankles is to invite the client into the land of being and not doing. If the touching dialogue therapist is very active with their hand muscles, their arm muscles, their shoulder muscles, and their back muscles, as as many massage therapists um, use their body in that way, then the touch message would be much more about doing, getting something done, accomplishment, measuring success. The focus of touching dialogue is on the level of being an unconditional acceptance, not having any expectation about what the client is supposed to do. Now, I would like to, we're coming to the, the two short films, and this is a demonstration. This is, these films were not taken as part of an actual therapy session. The person lying on the table, acting as if she's the client, is a touching dialogue therapist named Trina Eskerlund. The first therapist you will see is Stefan green Meinl, who is the second touching dialogue teacher. And the second, in the second film, the, th the therapist you see is, is myself. You'll be seeing the, the, mostly the, the pillow positions in the first film, and the second film goes on to show the, the um, minimal touch movement on the back. Are you ready for touching work? Yes. Please uh, place yourself on the table. May I suggest you move your right arm down by your body? Yes, that's perfect. May I touch you? Yes. Alright, so first of all, I would like you to roll to this side by lifting this side. Yeah, that's good. The next thing that will happen is that I will lift your you know, left leg and place some pillows under it.
Here comes the second film. Is it okay if I continue with your right leg? Yes. yes. And I would also like to lift your right hip. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. And Trina, along the way, is it okay if I um, put into words the message that is coming through my hands? It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to touch you now. Yes. I just want to hold you so that you can begin to get to know my touch and also so I can begin to get to know your energy and your the signals you're sending me. May I lift your hip again? Yes. I'll lift under this bone here. Okay. There's more space. For you to be you. Trina, I would like to touch your back. Is that okay? Yes. And one thing I want to say, when we were like in a normal touch and dialogue session, there would be a stop agreement agreed upon in the first conversation when the two people are still sitting on the chairs. So I would like to invite you to just experience saying stop sometime in the next two minutes. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I'm taking time to feel the signals that your body is sending me, sending to my hand. I'm also giving time for you to feel comfortable with my hands touching your back. I want you to know there's no pressure. There's lots of time for you. Stop. I will stop. Is there anything you want to say about what that was like for you to say stop? It's okay for me to say stop. It's okay for you to say stop, yeah? yeah. To know that you're going to step back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that I will do. Mm. If you say stop, I lift my hands and I step back. Yeah. Is it okay if I continue? Yes.
don't have any expectations about what's supposed to happen or what you're supposed to do. You have an invitation just to be, to be aware, to be yourself. In Berlin, when I gave this talk, one person asked, Touching dialogue looks so different than Gestalt therapy. How can they work together? So now we come, in answering that question, I really talk about the benefits of touching dialogue. I see these benefits as really explaining how TD can be used with Gestalt therapy. Many TD clients, part of their goal is to increase their body awareness. The slow, contactful touch of TD gives the client opportunity to experience their body on the sensation level. Here I will describe what I call the spiral of awareness, which is very um, familiar to Gestalt therapists and is just a natural benefit from, t from um, touching dialogue. On the sensation level, I mean the internal experience of hot or cold, hard and soft, dry, moist, stiff and relaxed. Using this sensation level as a source, TD clients connect their body sensations to their emotional feelings. Feeling angry, sad, glad. Using the combination of sensations and feelings as a source, TD clients make decisions and take action. with a person or a client who focuses their life experience living around this spiral of awareness, then it leads to a, a more frequent moments of living a life of authenticity. Setting boundaries. By setting boundaries, I mean saying yes and saying no with the connection to your own body experience. For example, one woman in her late 20s had the short-term goal to be more clear, to, to communicate what she wanted and what she did not want when she was having sex. This turned out to be a theme of her adapting to what she thought the man wanted. Here in this picture, you see where I'm positioning for the pillows and I'm lifting her right leg and beginning to, to extend it, to stretch it, to give more space to her lower back. When I first touched her leg and, and uh, lifted her leg, the client discovered that she would lift her own leg before I could do it. It was almost like a reflex to help me. We talked about this, and I invited her to allow me to lift her leg. Through several sessions, she disconnected from lifting her own leg and allowed me to, to lift it for her. She recognized her adaptive pattern. She later told me that this transferred into her saying and showing what she wanted and did not want sexually from her partner.
Through the gentle, caring touch of TD, a client receives a, a touch message of unconditional acceptance, of nurturing from an ideal parent. Some clients use TD to fulfill the emotional longing and hurts still affecting them from their childhood. TD helps some clients to connect to their deep self. By this I mean to activate the deep awareness of the self within. TD gives a very gentle, quiet touch without expectation of what the client is supposed to do. One woman from Copenhagen used TD to experience a certain quietness of mind in her meditation. She would recognize when it happened. When she came for her third session, she said, This has happened for me. I have a quietness at this point in my meditation, and this will be my last session. TD helps people to connect to their own being, awareness of the, their life, of their existence within their body. The gentle, caring touch of TD invites people into a place of stillness, calmness, and safety that may lead people to an awareness of beingness. This experience of beingness is simply a new experience for some people. In the 80s, I worked with several people in Berlin who had as children experienced the bombing night after night during the Second World War. World War. Night after night, when they heard the sirens, their parents took them into the cellar. They listened to the bombs exploding, not knowing when their building would be next. As they received TD, my hands felt a, uh, felt a vibration of panic and fear from their body. They were living in a continuing adrenaline reaction 40 years after the original experience. With these people, it took quite a few sessions, and gradually they absorbed the TD message of safety and calmness. Their bodies took in the message that a child deserves, the message of safety, the message that everything will be all right. So to review, TD works well in combination with, with Gestalt therapy. TD can be used to increase a client's body awareness, for a client to learn to set clear boundaries, to guide a client to heal the hurts from their childhood, for a client to experience their deep inner self, and to become more in contact with their own beingness. Now I'd like to tell you about the training to become a TD therapist. First I'll tell you about the structure of the training, and then later I'll go more into the, the juice or the energy of the training. TD is an advanced training for psychotherapists and for people soon to finish a psychotherapy education. I'm wanting people who I take into the training to know to be familiar with the frame of psychotherapy, how the, the what the therapist is responsible for, what the client is responsible for, and to have that that training and experience in the background. The training for TD is in very small groups. The training takes place with a maximum of six students and with two teachers. So there is very close personal contact with every student. It's more like a mentor-mentee relationship. I'm planning an international training and the time structure for this training will be five weekends scheduled over a two-year period.
with this first international training, it's planned with an introductory weekend, the 5th and 6th of February 2011. By introductory, what I mean is it's an introduction decision weekend. It is the first weekend of the training, but it's both an introduction for people to experience how the training is, and for both participants and for the two teachers, Stefan and me, to make a decision about uh, who we accept into the training, who we see has the potential to, uh, to integrate this training in four more weekends, which is actually a very concentrated and relatively short teaching period. The cost is 5,000 crowns per weekend of teaching per student. Now we come to what I call the juice of the training, the energy of the training. Just recently, I had the final day of teaching for a group of Danes. To increase permanent memory, I was reviewing the two years of teaching. What had gone on? What were the main points? What were the themes? I began by saying that I would be, I, I would be describing three aspects of the teaching, and the first person that guessed each of these aspects would get a prize. Before I said another word, Trina Vestigore said, Body, mind, spirit. So I thought for a moment. I had planned to headline these three areas as touching, understanding, and inner awareness. But I realized that Trina had identified these three areas and on a higher level of, of a higher level of, of abstraction. So I said to her, you win the prize. Under touch under touching comes touch sensitivity and learning to send and receive energy and skin transmitted messages. One of the part of the training in between weekends is what I call life experiences, life exercises. One of the first ones is for students to begin touching dogs, using a touching dialogue touch, and to sense when the dog says yes and no. Touching dialogue is very much responding to the signals which come, the touch signals, the tissue signals coming from the client. Later on, there is a, an exercise where, where students take contact with a baby um, between this, the, 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 the stages where the baby is crawling and not yet walking. So the, the, the student would develop a connection, a friendship, a rapport with the baby, so the baby feels safe having this, this student uh, feeding the baby uh, with a spoon. So the student would, would become sensitive to the yes and no signals of when the baby wants to eat more or not eat more or eat something different. I've described some of these life exercises and part of the purpose of them is to provoke a student into using their potential to be a touching dialogue therapist. One student several years ago had so much bound energy that he was that sometimes he would be shaking when he was giving touching dialogue se sessions. I suggested that he begin fencing lessons. Fencing that's where you have a, um, a sword and you're sort of moving back and forth, and then at a certain moment you make a decision and lunge forward to try to touch the other person's chest with your sword. He took the invitation. 
he actually was was very excited and enth- enthusiastic about this as as he did it uh, week after week. Within a few months, he was transmitting his energy to clients as a smooth flow. The TD training requires giving a lot of practice sessions and includes ordinary visual supervision which with the international training would be done over the net with Skype as well as live supervision which is partly a student working directly on one of the teachers and the teacher giving instant feedback as to what as to the touch message that that student is giving at that microsecond With understanding, I teach the philosophy and values of TD. The teaching is very experientially experientially based, and there isn't a lot of reading, but there are two books which are very relevant. One is the book Why Love Matters, How Affection Shapes a Baby's Brain. The affection here is mostly, as written in the book, is mostly uh, touch affection. Another book is is called The Biology of Belief, written by Bruce Lipton. In this book, he describes, in a language that I could understand, the, the new sciences of signal transduction and epigenetics. Uh, These two new sciences are documenting um, how the membrane of the cell is actually functioning as the brain of the cell, sensing the environment around the cell, and moving the cell toward nurturing positive environments and away from hostile or dangerous environments. In his book, He's, he's, he's validating what I wrote back in the 1980s, and I was writing from my own experience, what my hands were telling me as I worked with clients, so what I believed in. But now it is being docu- documented on a scientific level. Part of the training is so, so that students integrate the the philosophy, the ideas, the theory of touching dialogue so that they are confident in presenting it to other people. When I talk about inner awareness, one way that I bring this into the teaching, inner awareness, is that each teaching day begins with a meditation. The focus of the meditation is inspired by my, by my years of being a, a Gurdjieff teacher, where one of the focuses is to separate your identifications from your essence. This process activates a person's observer, which leads to clear boundaries. Some of the time, while touching dialogue is going on, it's quiet. There isn't talking between the client and the therapist. So in these times of, of quietness, it's very important that the therapist have clear boundaries within their own energy system, within their own awareness and intention system. Also, with the focus on inner awareness, I use life exercises. An example is a a woman who had so much control and perfectionism that she was keeping much of her warmth and compassion to herself. Stefan and I invited her to lead a group of teenagers, including boys and girls from ages 13 to 15, for this group to meet with Trina. Oh, well, I told you who she was. To meet with Trina to write, it's actually a different Trina than the one you see in the film, for this group of teenagers to write, 
to write a play and um, and then to, to present the play to the rest of the class. I can tell you the teenagers did their imagined job beautifully. The teenagers didn't know the teaching purpose. When the presentation was made, they were so creative, spontaneous, and impulsive, they completely went beyond the script which they had planned and just began improvising. So that Trina's attempt at control to keep it to the script simply broke down and emerged into riotous laughter for the audience, for the performers, and for Trina. This breakthrough carried over into her touching dialogue sensitivity and also into her private life. Another focus of, with inner awareness is for a student to receive touching dialogue sessions during the course of the training. I believe that most inspired teaching has little value unless the learning goes into permanent memory. We use both music and drawing and review to take the learned experiences into permanent memory. Just recently, when we were fin completing the two-year training in Denmark, the students told me that the training has has stimulated and and um, been very positive for their personal development and for their personal relationships. If you're interested to know more about this the this international training or training in in Denmark, you are welcome to contact either me or Stefan through email and telephone. Maybe you have noticed that through this presentation I have again and again talked about the, the moving the client's inner experience from caution to potential. What do I mean by potential? When Michelangelo made a, a sculpture, he would begin with a block of marble, as you can see on the screen. He envisioned, he envisioned the finished sculpture inside of that block. And as he made the, the as he made the as he worked, he simply removed what wasn't necessary. He took what wasn't needed away, what didn't fit his vision. Here you can see a, a finished sculpture by Michelangelo. What TD is doing is removing the no's, don'ts, and can'ts from the cellular coding inside the client so that the cellular coding inside the client is vibrating with yes, want, and will. When I think of the potential of a client, then I think of yes, want, and will. And I think of the four basic permissions of childhood. The permission to be, the permission to feel, the permission to play, and the permission to do and, and succeed. In closing this talk, I would like to play a, a, piece of mu a piece of music which was composed by a Touch and Dialogue therapist named Marlene Davidson. She both composed this music and she also performed it. She's, she's singing all three layers of what you, you will hear now. So I invite you just to come into a place of quietness within yourself and listen to this music.